Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as I think you already know, Senator Boxer and I reached an agreement this morning on a six-year highway bill, uh, three years of which will be paid for without an increase in the gas tax. Uh, we are anxious to move that bill forward in the hopes that the House will consider it. Uh, we know they're going to be here a week shorter than ourselves before we go out for the August recess. One of the obviously indispensable players in this whole uh, agreement is our chairman of the Environment and Public Works Committee, Senator Inhofe, who's been a longtime uh, advocate for a long-term highway bill. As I think all of you know, it's been at least 10 years since we've done more than two years on a highway bill. And uh, we're pretty excited about the possibility of going forward on a bipartisan basis and doing something important uh, for the country. So let me call on Chairman Inhofe. Thank you, Leader. You know, I have to say that this is uh, Barbara Boxer and I don't agree on everything. But we sure agree on this, and this has been a partnership. We've been, uh, when you stop and realize, that if you read the Constitution, it says there are two things we're supposed to be doing here, defending America and roads and bridges. This is a major thing. The last bill that we had was 2005, and that was a five-year bill. We haven't had one since that time, and we've been operating on short-term extensions. The cost of short-term extensions is about 30% off the top. So the conservative position is for a long-term highway reauthorization bill. Uh, we'll have the uh, a vote on that this afternoon to uh, progress to it. And uh, this is uh, long overdue, but uh, it's going to be a good service for all of America. Thanks, Joe. John. Well, it seems like just a few weeks ago that uh, the minority leader and uh, prominent Democrats were calling for a long-term highway bill and saying that, in effect, there was going to be another shutdown. This is this time of the funding of, of, uh, of our highway and transportation needs. Well, we've responded, Senator McConnell and Senator Boxer and others responded to that challenge with a multi-year highway bill, which is particularly important to fast-growing states like mine, uh, where we uh, need the predictability of a long-term uh, bill so we can make plans to maintain and build bridges and highways to deal with the public safety, environmental concerns, as well as just the, the basic uh, quality of life issues. So we'll have a vote about 4 o'clock this afternoon to see whether our Democratic allies, who were the ones who just a few weeks ago were calling for a long-term highway bill, will take yes for an answer. Uh, if they do, then this will be another piece of constructive uh, progress we've made so far this year in a number of different areas which has demonstrated the difference between a Congress which is dysfunctional like it was last year and a Congress that is functional and responding to the needs of the American people. Well, let me just, uh, I want to come back to highways in just a minute, but just say uh, briefly too that uh, I think there was a lot of bipartisan concern about the administration's decision to go to the United Nations with the Iranian nuclear agreement before coming to the American Congress. And I think what that suggests is that the President of the United States is more concerned about what the United Nations thinks than about what the American people think. Uh, obviously, when he directed, instructed his, uh, our ambassador to the UN, Samantha Powers, to vote yes on that before this thing had ever been reviewed by the Congress, ever been debated and discussed among the American people, I think that speaks volumes about how this deal was, was uh, cooked ahead of time. Uh, on highways, uh, this is an opportunity, I think, for a significant bipartisan achievement for the American people. Uh, if we can do what we are talking about getting done in the next uh, week or so here, it will be the longest highway bill literally in 10 years. We can do a multi-year bill. Uh, there will be no gas tax increase, and it will provide the certainty that uh, those who build our roads in this country need and that our states need when it comes to planning uh, many of the infrastructure projects that are so important to our economy and to our competitiveness. So I hope that we can get through this. I know that my staff was here through the weekend working on our particular provisions, the titles that, uh, that, that our Commerce Committee deals with. And um, I think a lot of those issues have been resolved in the bill that will be presented uh, later today and be voted upon hopefully later this week and into next week uh, is something that will uh, provide a good balance between uh, regulators 
and industry. We had a record number of recalls last year, 60 million recalls of automobiles in this country, which is an issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, we've got significant uh, provisions in uh, rail title, passenger rail uh, provisions that will be especially, I think, helpful in dealing with the aftermath of the, the derailment that occurred in the Northeast here recently. And uh, so we think that there are a number of provisions in the Commerce Committee title of the bill that coupled with uh, you, which you heard Senator Inhofe talk about, the Environment and Public Works provisions, the Banking Committee provisions, and of course the pay-fors uh, will combine to make this a highway bill, an infrastructure bill that will be really good for our country, for our economy, uh, and for jobs. And so I hope that we are able to get that done and check that box and uh, get another accomplishment for the American people. With regard to the Iranian uh, agreement, uh, Samantha Power called me last week right after the agreement came out and she said the, the greatest weakness of this agreement is its complexity, so that people would actually need time to review it. But rather than giving people the time to review it, the President made a mad dash to the United Nations, made an end run around Congress and the elected representatives of the people and decided first to go to the United Nations. And now I believe he's going to try to bully the Congress into signing on to his deal. Uh, we're saying, what's the rush? We are going to be having hearings starting Thursday in the Foreign Relations Committee with the Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury, as well as Secretary of Energy. And after we go through all of those hearings, we will then go and listen to people back home over the, over the uh, recess in August. We have great concerns because I believe this administration was so desperate to get any deal. They made concession after concession. The anytime, anywhere inspections, the 24-7, have now gone to 24 days until you can actually get in and do the inspections. Just last week, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, General Dempsey, said under no circumstances should we allow ballistic missiles to be sold to Iran. But under bullying by Putin in, in Russia, the agreement has come out that Russia will be able to sell to Iran ballistic missiles that can be used against our friends and allies and even against the United States. And where, are they going to, where is Iran going to get the money for this? From the relief of sanctions. So there is incredible concern. There is bipartisan skepticism about the deal, bipartisan concerns about the deal. And come September, when we vote on this, many Democrats are going to have to choose whether they want to provide political protection to their president or actually focus on the safety and security of the people of the United States. Say on the highway bill, there's a combination of things coming together that could have great potential for us in energy, uh, in world food demand, in manufacturing. All that requires a, a transportation system that works. Uh, since 2005, a five-year bill passed in the Bush administration. I think there have been 33 short-term extensions of, of transportation funding. You can't build roads and bridges uh, six months at a time or two months at a time or even the best case scenario in that uh, period of time, two years at a time. This is a real opportunity to move the country forward. It's a real opportunity for states that have their own challenges with transportation to look at a long-term commitment of federal funding and say, here's what we need to do to do our part. Right now, with these short-term bills, by the time a state can make an argument that they need to do more to match the federal funding, federal funding's over, and then there's uh, no certainty about moving forward. This is a big moment for economic opportunity in the country. I hope we can get this work done, and we'll find out if we can get started on it later today. Well, this is a big moment, as Roy says. It's, it's really another big moment. And, and I would simply point out, uh, as you know, I'm chairman of the NRSC, and as such, I'm, I'm the bridge between the elected leadership and the campaign arm of, of Senate Republicans. Uh, when we went before the, the American people last November, we said that we could change the process here, we could start moving bills uh, as the American people want us to do, and that we could govern and govern effectively. So on top of the highway bill, which I think we will pass over the next uh, uh, week and a half, you add that, the, the great accomplishment we had last week of an open process with an education bill, a bipartisan majority for that under the leadership of Senator Alexander, and then a list of our accomplishments on things that, that basically used to tie us up. 
uh, the SGR bill, the, the doing away with the so-called annual dock fix, which, which we have to do. We have uh, resolved that issue on a permanent basis. Add to that human trafficking, trade promotion authority, uh, the defense bill, which I think we will uh, come to closure on with the conference, and of course the budget resolution. So uh, good government, I think, is good politics, and I think we continue to show week after week that we can govern and govern effectively. Yeah, it's my anticipation that an XM provision will be uh, offered on the transportation bill. Uh, you're talking about the religious liberty? Uh, yeah, uh, at some point this year, we'll, we'll obviously want to take a look at that. Yeah. Well, what we hope, what we hope is that the multi-year paid-for highway bill that we've been discussing, that we hope to get out of the Senate in the next uh, week or so, will be attractive to the House of Representatives. Um, Senator Blunt just pointed out how many short-term extensions we've had. Enough is enough. And if we can produce a bill that they find uh, attractive, I hope they'll consider it and pass it. Senator McConnell, uh, Senator Grassley had a hearing today on the issue of sanctuary cities and immigration. Is that an issue that needs to come to the House for, whether it's to bring his bill up, or does the Senate need to take action on sanctuary cities? Yeah. Uh, on the timing of that, I couldn't tell you right now, but Senator Cornyn, you might want to comment on the hearing, sir. Yeah. Well, obviously, the issue of uh, criminals who violate not only our immigration laws, but also uh, commit other serious crimes was a subject of the Judiciary Committee hearing today. And uh, we heard the heartbreaking stories of family after family from all sorts of background, races and ethnicities and walks of life who've been um, uh, victimized by criminals who have flouted our laws and uh, committed these crimes, many of them uh, against uh, minorities as well, uh, the communities in which they, they live. So uh, Senator Grassley, I know, is taking this matter very seriously. This hearing was the first part of that. I expect there will be legislation that will be offered, uh, hearings on that, and my hope is we'll be in a position to vote a bill out of the Judiciary Committee and present it to the Majority Leader for his consideration uh, in due course. Okay, thanks.